Hello, everyone, and thanks for attending our session. I am Paulo, uh, Sales and Alliances Manager here at Answer Modules, and with me is Patrick Vitali, our R&D Director, as well as our CEO. Today, we would like to showcase how our product, uh, the Module Suite, is utilized to enhance the standard Content Suite workflow engine. So before we jump into workflows, I would like to take a quick minute to really introduce uh, the Module Suite. So essentially, it's an add-on which provides a low-coding framework to create uh, and deliver uh, tailored business solutions on top of Content Suite and Extended DCM. It essentially allows you to do more with your EIM platform with less effort and at the end of the day, deliver really awesome results to uh, your line of business. It comprises um, a wide variety of tools which really enable several use cases. The four main ones being advanced forms, tailored UIs, smart automation, and today's focus, workflow enhancements. So again, these are, let's say, the four main use cases of the module suite. These aren't the only ones, but for today, let's focus on what we can do, how we, we can enhance workflows. So uh, when it comes to workflows, it's extremely important to know that we do not add a new workflow engine. Uh, we're enhancing the standard out of the box content suite workflow engine by adding a series of functionalities uh, and features and, and general enhancements. For example, the module suite can be utilized to create very uh, highly productive forms that serve as the main way for your business users to interact with the workflow. Uh, we can also add uh, tailored workflow steps so essentially this allows you to implement complex routing mechanisms, uh, distribution logic, and in general, uh, generate a workflow map that is better aligned to how your business uh, truly operates. And we can also uh, add, um, sorry, we can also create a brand new workflows prod uh, programmatically based on certain events. So a very high level uh, of automation in that case. And last but not least, uh, the module suite can really be utilized to automate pretty much anything uh, in a workflow. So it can also help transfer uh, your organization's know-how, uh, your people's uh, know-how on the processes and how the business operates directly into a workflow. So transferring the organization's knowledge, putting that into a workflow, into an automated workflow as well. So uh, before I hand things off to Patrick for the demo, I wanted to share a real life example of how the module suite can really improve uh, workflows. So what you're seeing on the screen, this is naturally a before and after picture. So the customer's original workflow was huge and well, pretty much uh, unwieldy. It was, um, I believe 128 steps, if not a little bit more. And it was very difficult to interpret and very difficult to maintain as well. So what the customer did is that they utilized the module suite to re-engineer that same workflow. So added their own logic, add, uh, added uh, custom, uh, sorry, tailored workflow steps, et cetera. And the end result was a workflow that was just eight steps. But that's, I say, not the best part. The really uh, awesome, uh, awesome part is that this uh, re-engineering, it only took one day and they were actually able to add additional functionality. So all in all, the customer obtained a much more streamlined workflow, one that is easier to maintain in the long run, one that has uh, more capabilities, and they obtained this all with very, very minimal effort. So with that, I'd like to hand things off to, uh, to Patrick for the actual demonstration. My name is Patrick Vitali. I'm uh, already the director and CEO at Answer Models. So um, today we're going to talk. We're going to talk about uh, workflows and how uh, Model Suite can impact the way you are conceiving them on the Content Suite and Extend ECM platform. But instead of trying to guide you through the different capabilities uh, that Model Suite can offer, uh, I'd like to uh, have an end-on session, which we're going to in a very simple workflow implementation and to see how you can address a series of uh, very typical requirements that you might want 
uh, that you might face uh, during workflow development on top of, uh, again, Content Suite and Extend this year. So um, our um, toy example for today is in a loan approval, a mortgage, mortgage approval uh, process is actually pretty simple. Um, it is um, obviously an oversimplified version of a more much more complex process. But the idea is to, um, uh, again, guide you through different implementation choices that we made and what are the capabilities offered by models in terms of what you can do with the engine. So um, this will be a form-based process. So the idea is that we're going to collect through this process both documents and information related with the, the mortgage or the loan that we would like to approve. And we will have a pretty simple workflow map. So the, the, the process itself, it's um, very well defined and, and pretty simple, but we have a, an old set of um, functional requirements uh, that we would like to, um, uh, to map or our business like um, to be met. So um, the process is described um, on the screen, it's, it's as I said, pretty simple. So everything starts from a request for a mortgage, and uh, we will need to collect um, all the information related with the mortgage through a, a digital form. And we also need to collect all the um, relevant documentation. And one of the functional requirements here is that um, you shouldn't be able to start a new request unless you have provided all the entire list of documents and um, so we basically need to check that um, your uh, workflow attachments uh, are consistent with the request that you are uh, you are submitting um, the request is then passed to a loan officer um, who's in charge of checking uh, your request and eventually either approved it or or rejected it and it's pretty simple uh, decision and we want this uh, user to not to be um, let's say um, too much involved in any decision related with the the numbers uh, it actually sees but uh, more on the uh, correctness of the of the request itself so uh, for this reason we want the um, the process to have a subsequent check that checks for two basic uh, things. So first of all, the decision taken by the previous user. So it was either the request approved or rejected, but also we want to check the, the request itself against um, a set of rules, business rules that are codified in the system and allows us, for example, to identify risks uh, related with this, um, this mortgage and um, eventually to uh, engage a second approval level um, in case, as said, uh, for example, the interest is uh, resulting in a too high interest. And obviously we want to allow the, the business to uh, define themselves this, uh, this sort of condition. So we want to keep it as simple as possible so that they can in time um, change the way the interest is, for example, computed, um, for example, because of the interest percentage applied or the um, typical length of the mortgage, etc. So we want to provide the business a way for, for doing it. Uh, the um, asking is for, um, for this uh, process, we want them to uh, be automatically fetched from our most recent organizational chart, which is saved on the system, or should be saved on the system, and so should be made available directly to our uh, end users. Uh, another thing that we want to do is obviously um, to notify users as soon as they uh, are assigned a task, or as soon as a workflow is started. And so on the basis of this check, uh, the request can be either approved, rejected, or sent for a 
some secret approval to our director. And again, the, the user here must be uh, determined, so the assignee must be determined on the basis, uh, again, of the current uh, organizational chart. And again, on the basis of the decision taken by this user, um, the document, so the request can be either approved or rejected. Doesn't matter what, which is the actual outcome of the request, whenever the request is completed, so the process is completed, we need to archive um, into a non-modifiable document, so typically a PDF, all the information related with the request, together with all the information related with how the request was either approved or rejected. So basically, the um, all the information related with the audit trail of the of the workflow and the and the process uh, or comments exchanged during the the process itself. So as as you can imagine, so this is a a, a pretty complicated representation. But um, if you consider all these uh, functional and non-functional requirements, you can imagine how complex the resulting workflow map. Uh, would be on content server and you are imagining wrong because if we open the actual form uh, workflow implementation you will see that is actually pretty similar to the one that was designed by the, the business analyst is in fact actually pretty much the same so we have a, a couple of form steps uh, we have a content script evaluation step and we have the two milestones that determines the final status of the, of the workflow. And all the business logic that we have discussed is in place. And so the workflow is actually pretty, uh, pretty um, easy uh, to be utilized and pretty easy to be understood by the, the end user. So let's first of all see the workflow in action and then let's discuss what the um, the different implementation decisions we took um, affect the way the the, the workflow um, works. So the workflow is started by a form um, available both from Classic and Smart UI. So here I can um, collect the information uh, that is requested for a route a new request. Um, obviously, I can have in amount here i can have a um, the request date and i can have additional information so we obviously oversimplified this form just to provide you um, a glance of well, how the form can be utilized um, we will have a, um, attachments and we will have the possibility to preview the attachments that we are going to add to this to this process if i try to start the process Obviously, there is validation in place, so I cannot start a process without specifying the amount uh, for this mortgage. So I can select uh, the amount here and um, some additional information to be provided here, and I can try to start it again. And as you see this time, the system is preventing me from start a new request because uh, I didn't provide any attachments. So what I should do is to uh, go, for example, here in my attachments folder, upload something. And the, the check that we implemented here is a super simple check, meaning that we are just checking for the existence of some attachment in the workflow. Um, the check can be actually much more complex, so we can check that um, the documents that you're uploading are the, the right one um, in relation to the to the request that you are um, starting, and uh, or that the content of the document is the right one, or that the um, categories associated to the to the document has the right value, etc. So for uh, this very simple example, we were limiting our checks to at uh, the existence of any uh, workflow attachment. So we're going to start a request and what is going to happen is that the system is going to actually start a new workflow, uh, but I won't see the standard content server um, page um, 
that is telling us that the workflow has been started correctly. On the other hand, we are going to be redirected uh, immediately under my personal assignments. So I will be able, if any assignment will be associated to this workflow, to, um, to directly access it. Another interesting aspect here is that uh, the workflow will be um, actually be renamed and as per one of the requirements here, and the, uh, the title of the workflow will contain information related with the, uh, the current date. And once the workflow will be, um, when I'm going to start a workflow, another thing is going to, uh, to be done automatically by the system. And this is um, sending to the, the, the group I belong to um, that uh, this kind of request has been submitted. So let's start a workflow and see what happened. So I said a new request has been started. As you see, loan officer has been a new task loan officer has been assigned to myself. And we have this mortgage approval um, containing information about the, the, the current date and time in which this request has been submitted. And we also have received a couple of email. The first one saying that the workflow has been has been started. The second one saying that a, an approval step has been assigned to um, to me. So the way this um, this workflow was assigned to um, to me is actually pretty much related as said to. Uh, the current organizational chart. In fact, if we download the current organizational chart for our organization, we will see that I am currently configured as both the CFO as well as the loan officer. So the information, the, the, the step has been assigned based on this Excel file looking for this, uh, for this cell in this case. And so as a user, I can now open the form and you will see that the information displayed into the form is um, just a bit different from the one that we, um, we saw when we started the, the request. So the request date is no longer uh, editable. Uh, so I can no longer change the, this date. I can still change the amount and I can still change the body request. And also the buttons here have been uh, modified. So I now have the possibility to either approve or reject the request. So let's say that I'm going to approve the request. So what is going to happen here is that, um, again, the uh, interest uh, will be computed and will be computed on the basis of this Excel file. So uh, what we are going to basically utilize is to use this very Excel file. And to determine the, uh, the interest amount. So basically what the system is going to do is to put my uh, requested amount from here into here and is going to um, compute the value of the total interest. If the total interest is over um, 10k, um, the director will be, um, the, the request will be escalated to the director uh, for uh, a subsequent approval. And this will be the case. So if I click on approve, uh, we will see that basically the system is going to engage the director and we have seen that director also received an email containing information about the task that has been assigned to him uh, automatically. And by the way, this is not standard content server email. So this is a, a custom email uh, with custom layout, etc. that you can uh, design and configure the way the way you want it. Um, so if we go back to our assignments, what I can now do as a director is to either again approve or reject the request. So let's say that we're going to approve it. 
So what is going to happen is that the workflow will be completed and the system, as said, will create a PDF document containing the essential information related with this workflow and the document will be archived into that, that folder. So we have the amount and the request date in this case, very, very simple. So you might want to understand how many moving parts were actually involved into this, uh, this workflow. As you have seen, the workflow map is uh, very compact and very, uh, very simple. So just two form steps and a content script step, nothing, nothing more than that. So there are actually more uh, moving parts involved into this process. So let's first have a look at the um, the form that we have uh, that we have designed. So this form were created uh, entirely with our form builder, which is a what well, is is what you get editor. So a low code low coding tool that allows us to create um, forms and to associate some business logic to it. In fact, even though this form contains quite um, a, a business logic, uh, we haven't um, codified it. So the only thing that we, the only tool that we have utilized to create this form was the actual form builder. And in fact, you can see that there's uh, in the in the in this view there's both um, uh, widgets that are utilized to display the information to the users and widgets that are actually utilized to configure the um, the view itself. As you might have noticed, we don't have many views. So even though we have um, at least three different form staff that are utilized to approve and to complete this process, we actually have just one single view. So we don't have a view for the requester and the view for the loan officer and the, and the view for the, um, for the director. We have just one single view and um, the view is uh, contains the, the business logic necessary to adapt itself to the different um, stage in which uh, will, is utilized. So if I open the form builder once again and then look at the and the different components, I can see here that uh, for the amounts we have uh, utilized a currency widget. So currency widget has its own configuration. So we have the dollar prefix, etc. And currency widget has been associated to the required um, constraints. So there is no way to submit this form unless uh, this field has been associated. If you look at the fields that are part of this uh, form template, we see that we have a body request, which is basically a multi-line field. Then we have the amount field, which is a real request date, which is actually a date, uh, status, and fast track that are two strings. And so, and this uh, widget has been associated to currency. And request date has been also associated to a flat picker widget, which is basically a date picker with some fancy um, look and feel. And the interesting aspect here is that the, uh, this widget is initialized with the current date and has been initialized this way, so current date. And um, this widget is in read-only whenever you are in a workflow. So basically, um, the beautiful web form framework has a notion about the current work ID for, uh, for the form, associated to the form. So if the work ID is uh, greater than zero, means that you are in a workflow um, and not in the starting step. So we have uh, basically this field that is going to uh, be dynamically uh, made read only by the by the framework. Um, then we have another couple of things here. So we have the, the buttons uh, that are displayed. And again, the buttons are configured on the basis of um, um, a simple business logic uh, checking if you are actually running in a workflow or not. So if you are not running in a workflow, the only button display is the star request. If you are actually running in a workflow, uh, there are two buttons that are displayed. So the one for um, approve and the one for reject the, the request. 
So again, this is done a single view that is reconfigured based on where you are in, in the process. Then we have the inputted and filled form status that we are resetting to not approved whenever the form is, uh, is open. So whenever a user is um, managing his, um, his decision by default, the decision is not approved, to not approve the, um, uh, the request. Then we have uh, this widget that we utilize to associate a title to the different forms. And this again can be dynamic. In this case, we utilize a static, um, static string. And then we have a validation rule that checks uh, for um, the presence of attachments in the, uh, in the attachments folder. So, um, so if there is no attachments that have been specified automatically, uh, we return an, an error. And this is pretty much about the, the form. So uh, was designed in a very, 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 very fast, I would say in less than half an hour, and can be much more complex, but we, we kept it simple. And obviously why we were developing it, we were looking at the, the look and feel of the form even before having actually created the form. And this is thanks for the fact that we have, we can toggle preview. And if uh, we decided to adopt a different look and feel for, for it, we can still do that. And we can see how um, the, the form will change its look and feel just based on the view template that we are going to select, which I remember you is nothing but a, the skin that you want to apply to your, um, to your form. So this is it uh, as far as the, the form, so the user interface is, is concerned. Um, one of the things that they have noticed is that when we started the workflow, we are not actually displaying the page. And this is because as a developer, I uh, introduced a very simple instruction that is executed after the form is submitted. And this instruction is to redirect the user on the personal assignment page. So this is a typically a, a dashboard related with uh, these workflows that you are that you are managing, or can be as uh, as I did a, just the, the personal assignment page. Uh, if we have a look now at the at the actual workflow, at the actual workflow map, you will see that we have associated to this workflow a bunch of um, of scripts. So assign, ta assign tasks, check amount email notification and PDF summary. So let me open in a new tab um, the workflow map to see where they utilize. So first of all, uh, we are utilizing the email notification in several places. So we are utilizing this content script whenever the workflow is started. And we are also utilizing this email notification script whenever one of the uh, steps becomes ready. And if we look at the email notification script, what it does is to um, verify um, this current start of the workflow. So having task ID equal to zero means that uh, the, the workflow is, has been just started. So um, you are not actually in any, uh, in any task. Otherwise, you are currently work uh, in a task. And what we are doing here is to um, creating an email based on a, on a template here, you can see, and we are sending out this email specifying a subject, a target member, which in this case is just the current user, but can be a group, can be uh, multiple groups, etc. And we are also modifying the uh, email header. So if you open the same email with, for example, Outlook, you will see that this email is marked as important. So this is a very uh, interesting thing that you can do with this email service. So you can decide based on the on the condition of the workflow or the, or the request to set this email with high priority or not so that the, uh, the user is going to receive in their mailbox uh, email with high priority or not. And um, so this is as far as the email notification is concerned. And um, the other thing that happens on the 
a workflow level is that when the workflow is completed, we are going to execute this PDF workflow summary a script. And the PDF workflow summary, what it does is to, again, basically um, get the information about the, the form that was um, attached to this workflow request, get the information about the, the workflow itself, and utilize our Doc Builder API to programmatically create a PDF document. And the document is creating with an adder and a footer in which we specify information about the, um, the logo and other stuff that we want to see in the adder and the footer. And also contains in the first table the amount and request date and also contain in the other table all the comments uh, that we have collected uh, on the workflow and all the audit trade uh, that we have collected from the workflow information. As you see, uh, everything is very, very simple. And we also have, in case the, the requests have been approved, we are also adding the approved watermark uh, on the top right of the document. And at the end, we are creating uh, the report document in the archive folder. So obviously this is bad practice to have an ID specified directly in the script. There's many different ways you can avoid this. Um, we did it only because we, this is just a, a very quick demonstration of what you can do. And um, if we look now at the uh, workflow uh, steps, you see that ICNE is not actually determined. In fact, the assignee is determined by the assigned task script. And what the assigned task script does, again, is to, in this case, um, load um, the spreadsheet that contains our organizational chart, look for uh, the current workflow task title, and on the basis of the, of the name of the workflow task, um, is going to fetch the information from one cell or, one other, or, or the other. Um, keep in mind that uh, this is just an example of the, the way you can uh, assign dynamically uh, the user or a group to a workflow staff. Um, behind this script, there's, you can have the most complex business logic. So you can query an external system, you can query your P, your CRM, your Active Directory, doesn't, doesn't really matter. So um, the takeaway here is that here you can have the most complex business logic and you can utilize it to determine the actual step ICNE. In this case, using an Excel file, it is super easy for us to uh, basically make the business users in control over their own workflow and of their own processes. Uh, so it's, it's very convenient way to enable business users to have more control over, over their own processes. And if we go back to our uh, workflow, we see that we have this evaluate step. And what this evaluate step does is to execute this content script and taking routing decisions. So either approve or um, direct or must approve. So either send on the workflow to the approve milestone or to send this workflow request to the director based on the outcome of the script. And the script is this check amount script. And what this check amount script does is, as mentioned, is um, basically just um, checking if you are actually approving the workflow and if you are approving the workflow and you are in that step really loading the spreadsheet, so the mortgage calculator that I showed you, and is updating cell D5 as I did. So cell D5, if you remember, is this one, and is updating cell D5 with the uh, information coming from the form, so the amount, is updating the formulas in, uh, uh, in the spreadsheet and is getting the value for uh, cell H7, which contains H7, the total interest amount. And if the total interest amount is over, as said, 10K, director must approve. And this is basically the output of, of the script. Otherwise, the request is immediately approved. And uh, once again, here you can imagine to have the most complex business logic 
to um, to determine how the workflow will be will be routed. Um, in this case, we are basically leveraging a computation that is performed into an Excel file. Uh, the great plus here is that if the business want to change, for example, the annual interest rate or want to change the uh, term of loan in, in years or have a more complex Excel file uh, to be utilized to determine how this value is actually computed, they can do by themselves. They don't have to ask any developer. They can come to content server, change this value in their Excel, upload a new version, and from that moment on, um, they basically change the the conditions that determines the, the, the routing for, for their workflow. And um, the last thing is, again, directory is pretty similar. So whenever the director becomes ready, uh, the, the director is assigned by a script and is notified by email notification. So as you have seen, um, the usage Smart usage of our scripting engine combined with the form allows us to keep the workflow very, very um, simple and with uh, a minimum amount of moving parts um, that are part of it and um, also allows us to provide great user experience to the end user, but at the same time also a, a great degree of freedom to our business users because they can literally take ownership over this process and on many aspects of this process. So thank you again for, uh, for your time and hope, uh, hope that um, this session was um, of help and you, you uh, enjoyed it. See you on one of the other uh, breakout session. I really encourage you to look at the other breakout session because um, some of these concepts are applied to more complex and um, more close to uh, real use cases and it's definitely interesting to see either of this automation and this uh, workflow stuff in action. Thank you so very much once again. Mm -hmm.